The late 90s and early 2000s was a great time to be a kid. Or at least that's what I've been told. There were many iconic films such as Titanic, Clueless, and the amazing audio-visual experience that is Space Jam. Boy bands like NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys were huge. Kids were running around trading Pokemans through their game boxes, and for some reason, Furbies were popular too. Though I wasn't old enough at the time to experience most of this stuff, there was one aspect of this era that I did, the TV shows. Through reruns, I was able to watch some of the popular kids shows from the 90s. Stuff like Family Matters, Hey Arnold, Daria, and Cat Dog. But the shows that caught my attention the most were Goosebumps and Courage the Cowardly Dog. These two shows are probably the reason I became a horror fan, and many others too. There were other horror shows for kids at the time, like Are You Afraid of the Dark for you Canadians out there, Tales from the Crypt Keeper, and this little series called Gregory Horror Show. Gregory Horror Show is an anime that came out in 1999 created by this guy named Naomi Iwata. It's about a hotel in the middle of the woods called Gregory House. People who are sick of their reality and want to escape from it eventually become guests of the hotel. Usually, after the main character realizes something is wrong with this place, they try to escape, but the guests and the hotel itself try to prevent this. The show is filled to the brim with dark themes that really have no business being in a children's show, but it's an interesting watch if you ask me. Just don't watch the fourth season, it's a waste of time. After the show finished airing, Capcom picked up a license to create a Gregory Horror Show game, and in August 2003, Gregory Horror Show Soul Collector was released to Japanese audiences for the PS2, and later that year it was localized for Europe and not North America for some reason, which is kind of weird to be honest, but hey, at least it's in English. The game begins with a throwback to the first episode of both Season 1 and 2. The protagonist is walking through a mysterious forest and eventually comes across Gregory House where they are greeted by everyone's favorite rat, Gregory. It is at this time that the player is asked to enter their name and their gender. In my first playthrough, I played as a male because I'm a big boy, but I did play a tad bit as a female in the second playthrough to see if there were any differences. And nope, it's purely cosmetic. After Gregory shows you to your room, you quickly fall asleep. In your dreams, you are greeted by the Swedish Grim Reaper, you tell him you want to leave this place, so he makes a deal with you. His job is to collect lost souls, but he's a lazy ass, so if you collect them for him, then he will help you leave Gregory House. Once you agree, you wake up and begin your quest for all the lost souls. This game doesn't really add anything to the overall lore of Gregory Horror Show, nor do I think it's canon, but I could be wrong about that. It seems to take some stuff straight out of the first two seasons, such as all the character introductions, with each being a clip from the show, or the ending for which I will not spoil here. Now when people think of survival horror games, especially ones from the 5th and 6th generation, the things that come to mind are probably tank controls, limited weaponry, item management, grim locales, and fix and or dynamic camera angles. Gregory Horror Show actually doesn't have most of these things, despite it being a survival horror game. Sure, there is an option to turn on tankies, but they're pretty useless because you can control the camera almost everywhere in the game, with the exception of a few very small rooms. There's pretty much no combat in the entire game, and though there is an inventory, the item management is nowhere near as demanding as it is in, let's say Resident Evil, as key items don't take up space. Gregory Horror Show takes place in a dark and creepy hotel, but it's kind of hard to see it that way with all the cuties walking around. And like I said earlier with the tank controls, you can control the camera most of the time. Very few areas in the game have fixed or dynamic cameras. With Gregory Horror Show being so different from all the other survival horror games, it's quite easy to see why this game caught my attention. Since I pointed out all the things this game doesn't do, 
I guess I should start talking about all the cool stuff it does. I mentioned earlier that the goal of this game is to collect souls. You're probably wondering how you actually get a hold of them. Well, it all starts with spying on the guest of Gregory House. Almost every guest besides the protagonist has a soul ripe for the taking, but it's not as easy as just grabbing it and running away. You must take your time to carefully watch your target as they walk through the halls, as they change in the locker room, as their doctor is telling them about their severe medical condition. Every second of spying will get you closer to their soul. You see, every guest has a schedule and a weakness. By spying on them, you slowly learn more about the character, the things they like, the things they hate. You can even hear them gossiping about the other guests. With knowledge of their weakness and their schedule, you can formulate the perfect plan of action for the perfect time and place. In a lot of cases, it's pretty easy to figure out what you have to do, but there are a select few that had me scratching my head after an hour of spying on them. Angel Devil Dog's soul, for example, was one of the few I had to look up a guide for. After spying on her for a while, I realized that when she is watching TV, she will stop paying attention to her soul. But at this time, Gregory is in the room with her, making it impossible to pick up the soul. So what you have to do is go into Catherine's room to get Gregory's dirty magazine, and show it to him just before he goes into the TV room. He will be too busy looking at his magazine to even clean the room, allowing you to be able to snatch the soul. The game is pretty much a cycle of new guests come to the hotel, you spy on said guests, then you take their soul, rinse and repeat. However, as expected, the game gets more and more difficult as you collect the souls. Not in the sense that the puzzles, if you want to call them that, get harder with each guest. It mostly stems from the fact that when a soul is taken from a guest, they become hostile. Whenever they see you in the halls of Gregory House, they will chase you down. As the game goes on, you will find yourself constantly looking at the map to make sure you don't run into anyone while you're trying to get another soul. If you were to get caught by any of the guests, you will be forced to watch a horror show. From the few I've watched, they seem pretty neat visually, but it sucks when you are actually playing the game. For starters, after witnessing a horror show, you will be knocked out anywhere from 5 to 24 hours, which will probably ruin your plans if you are waiting for a certain time to steal a soul. But worst of all, it drains much of your mental gauge. The mental gauge is the aura around your character portrait in the top left corner of the screen. As you make your way through Gregory House, this gauge will drain slowly. This is here to put pressure on the player to collect the souls as fast as they can. There are also a bunch of ailments that will impair your senses and cause the mental gauge to drain even faster, such as darkness, which you get from being in dark places like the basement or staying outside your room too late. It makes it hard to see, but it can be cured with eye drops. There are a few ways that you can raise the mental gauge. Restorative items can be found throughout the hotel, such as various foods and different color herbs, which is obviously a nod to Capcom's most popular survival horror series, Resident Evil. These items don't raise the mental gauge very high, so it's better to use them for trading at the Gregory Horror Shop where you can trade items you find in the house for key items, trading cards, books, and items that cure ailments. Speaking of books, reading them is another way to raise your mental gauge. They also raise the maximum capacity of a gauge if you read the whole set. Sleep is the last way to raise your mental gauge, although you can't just sleep over and over again to refill the gauge. This is all fine and dandy in the beginning of the game when items and books are everywhere, but as time goes on, you start to find yourself running out of items to keep your mental gauge up. Although the gameplay is pretty simple and the story doesn't really add anything meaningful to the lore of Gregory Horror Show, I must say that it is nice to be able to explore the world. This is something I've always been interested in. The way a good licensed video game allows you to take a look at a cartoon's world in a way you never could with the show itself. You really get to see the ins and... Well, not really the outs as you can't leave Gregory House, but you know what I'm getting at. It was cool to see how these areas from the show all connect. Even the new areas made just for the game feel like they could have been featured in one of the episodes. 
You get to see how all the characters go through day-to-day -day life at the hotel, which is something that is hard to get across in the short two and a half minute episodes the anime has. You get to see them engage with their hobbies and how they interact with the other guests of the hotel, and I find that really neat. Another game that does a good job of making a cartoon's world come to life is The Simpsons Hit and Run, which is a GTA-esque game that happens to be one of the few really good licensed games. Or maybe my nostalgia goggles are in full effect. You get to explore a lot of areas in Springfield and meet characters from the show doing whatever it is they do. There's also The Simpsons Virtual Springfield which allows you to explore various areas in town, although I have yet to play that one. But yeah, it's just really cool getting to explore the world of Gregory Horror Show. And the game even offers incentives for experiencing as much as you can. For example, some characters will break their schedule on certain nights to do something different. These are called special actions and can make items spawn for a short time after viewing. These can range from high value items for trading in the Gregory Horror Shop or rare books. Viewing these special actions will also grant the player a mini figurine. With so much collectibles, this game already has some replay value, but it doesn't just stop there. Once you collect the last soul and finish the game, you unlock a hard mode which takes away your ability to see the guest locations on your map. I can already imagine how difficult this makes the game as I opened up my map every 5 seconds in my first playthrough. Normally this is the part of the video I would talk about some of the dislikes I have. But to be completely honest, I only have one, and it's because I'm bad at video games. So all the souls are not made equal. Some are extremely easy to get, such as Catherine's soul. All you have to do is make her slip on a banana pill and take it. And some require a bit more thought, such as the angel devil dog soul I talked about earlier. But the hardest of all has to go to my son's soul. Yes, that's his name, my son. I'm going to try and keep this short. So what you have to do is steal my son's screwdriver while he's working on the clock in the storeroom. I like to think that that clock is his dead mother and he's trying to bring her back to life. Anyway, then you must show the screwdriver to his dad, Master Clock, and then he will begin to chase you. Every once in a while he will use his special time powers that let him teleport either in front or behind you. After he does this three times without catching you, he will collapse. Then you must hurry and bring the screwdriver back to my son before Master Clock gets back up. My son will call for his dad and after he doesn't come he will trade the soul for his screwdriver. Now that seems simple, but there are a few issues I have with getting this soul. First, this soul only becomes available towards the end of the game. At the earliest you can attempt to collect it, there are 7 hostile guests roaming the halls. Not counting Master Clock who will be chasing you when you get the screwdriver. If you don't plan your route before you start, you will end up running into another guest and at that moment, you are fucked. The best place to run to is probably the basement as the only hostile guest down there will be Roulette Boy. And although he can outrun you, the basement is big enough for you to avoid him altogether. After Master Clock is down, you must hurry and get back to the storeroom before he gets back up. It took me a few attempts to actually get this right, but once I did, I felt like a pro gamer. Gregory Horror Show Soul Collector is a great game and probably one of my favorites on the PS2. I highly recommend it, though it does kind of sit a bit high in the price department. But if you can find it cheap, then go ahead and get it. You won't be disappointed. It's filled with colorful characters and unique gameplay that is different from any other survival horror game that I've played. Along with the anime, there is also a manga and a mobile game that came out over the past few years. I haven't read the manga yet, although I am digging the different art style. And I have played a bit of the mobile game, but I dipped out as soon as I realized it had gacha in it. Duel Links already took my soul. I don't need another gacha game to ruin my life even more. But it does seem pretty cool. It's sort of like a mystery dungeon game, but with card combat. And all of a sudden, I need Chain of Memories to be remade in the Mystery Dungeon series. Spike Chunsoft, make this happen. Naomi Iwata teased a Gregory Horror Show revival subtitled Mystery Holiday, and apparently it's about Gregory trying to corrupt children so that he can take over the world. This was announced back in 2016, two months before the mobile game came out, 
so who knows what's really going on with that. If it does ever get finished and released, I hope they go with the new art style depicted in the line stickers they put out a while ago. So yeah, play Gregory Horror Show and or watch the anime. And if you enjoyed this video, then you should totally subscribe to the channel, because I have more videos on the way. I don't know how long they'll take to get here, but they're coming. See ya!